Hey guys, welcome to Meow Club. Um, I've said it before, I've said it again, his name is Jeff. Uh, he's here to do a deck tech, which was requested by uh, a watcher, a viewer, JJ. Shout outs to JJ. Thanks for watching, thanks for asking, and I'll pass over to Jeff. Cool. Um, so this deck tech is relied mostly on the idea of playing into aggression since it's centered around affliction. Um, the main benefit of the affliction mechanic of this deck is that they'll be taking damage whether or not they block you at all. This deck is running with 11 swamps and 12 mountains. Um, this is slightly heavier into red. You can feel free to improve your deck with dual land if you feel so. I just tend to be cheap about these things because I don't feel like putting in dual land. Um, so for the early game, you, you start off with only Camera Eternals uh, and your uh, tech cards, where you've got Dags of the Worthy to increase your damage and affliction. Blur of the Blades is a useful card due to it being at instant speed to put a minus, minus one count on a creature, uh, which can be the most important thing in a turnaround of battle. Um, the other benefit of Blur of Blades is that it also deals two damage to the creature's controller, since your idea is to try and reduce their health down as much as possible. Kemotel is just the, one of the smallest affliction drops you can get in these colours and has a decent stat line for it uh, if you have nothing else to play. Going into the three drops, we've got Lord of the Accursed and Amit Eternal, where Amit Eternal is one of the most powerful cards you can get from this slot. It's a 5 5 out on turn 3, um, where you can easily get in some damage or especially some afflict damage, probably even twice, uh, with guaranteeing you a 6 damage on your opponent. Uh, Lord of the Accursed is also useful to give all of your other, other zombies a buff so that they can stay on the field longer, as well as dealing more damage if they can get in it. Uh, I've tended not to use Menace, uh, which Lord of the Accursed can give to your creatures, because often there's much more beneficial ways to use your mana. Falling into the four drops, you've got Frontline Devastator, which isn't the strongest of cards, but once again fills in the slot in the deck due to Afflict being a relatively small mechanic in the block. Uh, so Frontline Devastator is an all-around all average creature, um, but Wildfire Eternal is one of the key pieces in this deck. Being a 1-4 with a Flick 4, your opponent's not necessarily going to want to block this creature, which is why you in fact have the Inferno Jet up at the top end of the uh, mana curve, where the Inferno Jet's purpose is mostly to be comboed off a Wildfire if they play into it, where you can get 7 damage on face if they don't block, or 4 damage if they do. Um, which mainly plays you trying to psych out your opponent to think that you do have such the play up your sleeve. Moving into the 5 drops, you've got Matico Eternal and Neheb the Eternal. Where Matico Eternal has some decent stats and some decent effect damage, um, it's just got a relatively expensive cost for what it is. Uh, Neheb is one of the most key players in this deck. Uh, for comboing into a finishing move. For if you land Neheb on the board and also have the Torment of Hellfire, which we've not, which has not been talked about, in your in your second uh, main step, in well, uh, the beginning of your second main phase, you can get a lot of extra red mana in your pool floating. Which means with Neheb attacks, you're guaranteed to at least get three red mana in your or mana pool, as long as well as you having the mana required to play him, leaving you with 8 mana on board, assuming you've only attacked with Neheb. Which is where Torment of Hellfire comes in. Being a 2, two black and X, uh, two, it means that each time, for each X, the process is repeated. Which means if you are to pay uh, 2 mana with no X, the process will be cast once, and for every uh, extra mana you pay afterwards, it is repeated an additional time. Uh, the, ma the main benefit of Torment of Hellfire is if you end up playing it early, you can force them into having a low amount of health so that they're forced to block more against your flick creatures and be on the de defense, which is a position you want to be in with this type of deck. If you play it late with Neheb, you can combo into about <laughs> seven repeat triggers. And with seven repeated triggers, you can look at your opponent not having a fun time because for each trigger they have to either discard a card, sacrifice a non-land permanent, or... D um, lose life. None of which are going to benefit them for what you're trying to do. If they lose life, then that leaves you more open to affliction. If they're sacrificing their non-land permanents and creatures, it's leaving them open to more affliction. 
and if they discard a card, it leaves them in a much weaker position. Although, by this point in the game, they're not likely to have many cards to discard anyway. So nonetheless, you're going to leave them in a very much weaker position. Ideally, as far as playing this deck out goes, you want to be trying to land Kenra followed by Amit. Turn 4, you either want to be landing a Wildfire, uh, if you've got Inferno Jet in hand, or Frontline Devastator. Otherwise, you want the Lord of the Accursed on the field to try and improve your Amit Eternal or Kenra Eternal on the board. Turn 5, ideally you want Neheb on the board, and then turn 6, you can hopefully head into a Torment of Hellfire, assuming everything plays out as planned. But I think that's about everything for this deck. Thanks, Jeff, and thanks, JJ. Uh, let us know what you think. Bye.